Hey everybody, Thursday again, <laughs> another Thursday. Man, are these Thursdays coming by fast or what? Anyways, we're doing a lion tonight. We're painting a lion and it should be a lot of fun. Um, I just painted it um, just before um, this afternoon in my class in Libertyville and here's what we came up with. Not too bad. Um, it was uh, not quite as colorful as, as I would have liked it to be, but I think we're gonna be using the same type of colors, maybe just pushing the color up a little bit and seeing how that'll look, all right? So here's what we're doing tonight. And um, we, we haven't done an animal in quite a while, so this is gonna be great. I'm gonna um, look forward to it. We were talking in class that it'd be nice to do some more animals too. Um, a couple of people said a sheep, maybe a cow, um, zebra. There's all kinds of things we can do. So we'll see, we'll see. Um, uh, we're not gonna do an animal every week, but we'll, we'll see what we can do with um, some of the animals. We haven't done, like I said, we haven't done an animal in a long time. So here we go. We're gonna first let you know uh, for your, all you newcomers about my website so that if you do need to get in touch with me or figure out what we're doing, this is where you go to beckerart.net and just go down here and see what we're painting each week. And that's what we painted the last two weeks before. And so that's cool. And if you gotta get my newsletter, you can go down here to my newsletter and get my newsletter. All right, so let's go right to our supplies. And so the supplies we're using tonight, again, as always, are my whole Holbein watercolors my uh, Becker art brushes. We're not using any masking fluid, though you could if you'd like with the whites of the, of the um, lion. And of course the Stonehenge um, white paper that we're using. And first off, we gotta um, say cheers though, because <laughs> it's very important. Tonight we're going with the Purple Monster. The Purple Monster is a blueberry pineapple Berliner Weiss, small batch ale. I'm not sure where it comes from, but let's try this one and give her a cheers today. And so we'll see how we're doing. Whoa. Oh, it's purple. <laughs> so yeah, that's good. Cheers, everybody. <sighs> okay, not too bad. <laughs> I'm going to give it about an, uh, let's see, about a, about an eight, eight paintbrush um, scale from one to 11. All right, let's say hello to everybody up out there. And let's first off, let's go to our tabletop. Actually, we got to go to our value study first. But let me see who's out here. Hey, Pamela. Hey, Sandra. Hey, Mel. Marianne. Mark. Um, hey, Lee. I'm, uh, um, welcome, Ginny. And I'm sure more coming up and they're always coming in late. But here's what we're painting. And so today I put a little filter on this, um, let's see, the, the photograph. I took the photograph, which you see here on the right. And what I'm doing, this is the photograph, and I'm not going to paint it green because you know, if you've been with me before, you know I'm not a big fan <laughs> painter of green, so I'm not going to make this green back here. And I will not just make him one color of this um, beige. Uh, I'm not going to, I just don't do that usually. If you want to kind of do this and use these colors, that's fine. But here's what's important, is the value. And what I did is I put a filter on this, and what I did is I broke down the black and whites and actually kind of broke them down to where there was not many middle tones. It's all kind of like one dark value. And so that's what you got to kind of think when you're looking at your picture over here is that you're looking at the colors and try to take the colors away. So you squint at the color picture to get this. This is what you should see when you're looking at the, at this picture, when you squint your eyes, you should see something like this. And so I thought, as long as I get this look of what light and dark pattern, this is a light and dark pattern. So this whole side here, uh, his arm, his mane, and the side of his face are all white. It doesn't mean it has to be white on the paper. It just means that you gotta keep those areas light. And then the shadow in here is gonna be a little bit darker in, in the background. And of course I left the leaves and everything like that in there. So anyways, to get to our tabletop here, we're gonna show you that what I had done was not quite that. You know, if you look at my painting here, I kind of missed the boat a little bit on that. Um, I made this part a lot of middle tones, which is okay. I mean, it's okay, but if you want to get that strong light effect, then you can have the middle tones like I did here. See how these are middle tones? And the middle tones should fall more into the dark side if I want to get that look like up here in this corner. If I want to capture that lighting, I've got to go with those kind of a little bit darker in this face. It's just, it just make, makes it brighter. Or make sure that all these darks, like this darks back here would be the same as in the face. Then that would work. Because if this dark and this dark is the same, that says that that is my dark. So if you're doing a high key painting, which we're going to probably be doing in a couple weeks and, or maybe even next week, we're going to be doing a high key painting, which is a painting that goes from a value of like one to five. And so if I go this dark in the background, 
and my value study says that this is the same value, then you have to do that. Um, if you want this color like this in the face, then make that value back here too. And then it'll, it'll still give you that same effect of light. And then make sure that this light is not middle tone either. So this is very light. So you can get that same effect as where it's light and dark, black and white. The colors don't matter when it comes to that part. Um, yes, you could have bright colors in here. You can have dull colors in here. You can have gray colors. That part doesn't matter. All right. So let's get going here painting. And so I'm going to try to go more for this look this time instead of what I did this afternoon, which is more of an overcast kind of look with the with the shadow being a little bit too light if you want to capture that kind of strong light look onto it all right so let me see if you have any questions again i have my um my chat open so if you have questions just chat them out <laughs> and type them out and i'll hopefully try to read one of them or two of them or three of them and so we'll um try to answer them i can't wait all tonight's video because i'm babysitting uh oh grandkids yep you're, well that's the nice thing about it also anybody that's new here you don't have to follow along at my speed you can always stop the video even when it's live you can stop the video and it will go on from that point on so you don't have to watch it through live you can watch it through it'll still seem like live when you go into your grandkids and put them to bed and then come back and then just keep on working or just watching it you don't have to paint it actually i don't think a lot of people paint while i'm painting um it's just a paint along that you can paint whenever all right, so let's get going here. So since this is not like a landscape, I'm going to go from my lights to my dark. So I'm going to right away go right into the face and get my lights. And again, questions, please ask. And so I am going to wet the entire face because this is fur. He's got a lot of hair and fur on him. So I want a lot of soft edges. And since he is the lightest part of my scene, he's going to be done first because watercolors you usually do light to dark. Let me take another swig of this um, purple monster. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Cheers. About a nine to nine compared to 11 being the tops. And not bad. All right, so wet it. I'm going to wet the whole surface. And I'm um, going to wet a lot of part of it. And I try to even, when I put my water down, I evenly put it across the paper so there's not big puddles or anything like that. It's evenly distributed over the paper. And so I'm just putting it in here really quickly. And then I'm going to use my smaller brush to actually draw and paint. Um, that brush seems to be a little bit too big to sit there and try to get small um, details in there. I'm going to try to use, I don't have like a, um, a beige color per se. I just make all my browns and um, with purples and orange. And, and like that, and, and blues and um, blues and oranges and purples and yellows, they kind of make a brownish kind of color. So I'm just going to go with like a little bit of a orange, a little bit of lavender, and you'll get kind of like a, a, a color that's close to a beige, a little bit of yellow in there. And so I'm going to leave the light alone, the light parts, and I'm going to go right away for getting my darker areas. Here I, I added some more purple my because I was running out. And so, I mean, if you have browns and such in your palette, then you can use those too. But I'm, I'm gonna try to make this one just a little bit brighter, not um, brighter as in with the, with the light. Yes, I am gonna try to do that too with the darker colors. I'm gonna try to add a little bit brighter colors in this, in this line compared to this one. This one seemed a little bit not as colorful um, as I would like. It'd be kind of neat to fun to dip up the color a little bit. And so I'm just going in here and getting my darks, my middle tones, basically shadows. And um, I guess I guess I am getting my lights too because my lights I'm going to put in next to where I want the white. The white is in here, and so I'm just going to leave that white of the paper. And so the shadow part of that, I'm going to put a little bit of color in there. So. My whites being white, my lights being white means that I then just have to watch out that I keep the paper white. And I, and I want to use my darks almost right away. I want to put those darks in almost right away with my lights. Because there is a, a big difference between the light and the dark in this picture. If you see right here, I mean, look at how dark that is and how different it looks. So I might as well just go right away and try to get that and just build some of those darks right away. And at the same time, putting in a little bit of the shadow color um, into the white area. I don't want to do that to all the white areas because some of them I just want to keep white of the paper. 
And so I just make sure you don't lose that white of the paper on some of it. Some of it you can just use a little bit of color to that. Hey, Tina. Tina's back. <laughs> I will enjoy my purple monster. And uh, what a great name for a beer, purple monster. And I love purple, so <laughs> I had to pick this one up and just try it. So here we got purple. We got, and somebody wanted to um, see the drawing a little, bit, a little bit closer. So there's a drawing a little bit closer. So you can see how much drawing I put into the picture. Um, it's kind of detailed, but not to a point where it's like really every hair is on him, but just enough to show me where the light kind of shifts and stuff like that. I'm going to stop talking and going in here and wet this a little bit more because it's starting to dry. Right? But I did have the air conditioner on for a little bit in here. I finally got an air conditioner in my studio here, but it's kind of loud, so I turn it off during the, <laughs> during the demonstrations. I don't want you to be able to talk over the air conditioner. So we're just going to go in here and get my lights of the, the lights of the the parts that are light, and I'm keeping white as I if a, if at all possible, keeping the white. There's a lot of white in this, and if you look up on his nose here, and then this oh I just went over some white, so just take that out of there. A little bit of yellow. See this is like um, I'm going around around the white areas and the top of here is kind of light so I'm kind of this is still the light and it's not the white because it's not, it's not gonna be all just pure white there's gonna be some colors that are very light but not white all right and, and this area of his body you know there's a lot of shadows on there from these leaves and stuff and if you paint them in like it is in the photo sometimes that will look like a carved in part of his body and really just keep it simple over here it doesn't really people are going to know that's his body if you keep it the same colors you don't have to explain everything in your painting a lot of times it comes out all on its own it it works it itself out our minds are um, good enough to know that this is a lion <laughs> and and that's probably his body and what else would be there right so here we're going to go in with a little bit of light right there a little bit more there and right away since I'm not going to be doing I'm not going to be doing um, green I'm going to make these leaves yellow um, just they can be fall it could be more in a fall type and so I'm just putting these leaves in and these I don't have to shape right now I'm going to shape them with my dark so I don't need to do any shape I just fill in really quickly these leaves because they will be placed in when I go to do the I go doing the what you call it, the um, leaves, the background, the background, I should say. I'm trying to think of two things at once here, <laughs> looking for my middle tones. And a lot of times when you do this little light stuff, you're kind of just getting rid of some of the white of the paper because white of the paper sometimes can be scary for artists. It tends to be like, oh, it's all white. And so if you just just kind of cover up a few things, it's not going to wreck anything because you're going to go over with this all a lot darker anyway. So it just kind of gives you an idea of what that color of light is going to be. All right, so those are all my lights, and those are um, the whites and the lights of the shadowing. And the top of this is going to be there. Now let's go with our darks. And our darks can have middle tones in them, so it doesn't have to be super, super dark. It just has to be dark enough to show that these are shadows. And so I'm going to go with my purple, a little bit of orange here, and maybe a little bit of lavender to dull it down, this orange. And then I'm going to go right in here and just start... Um, building a shape. This is how you do a portrait also. When you're doing a portrait, you kind of do it the same way. You do a wet into wet and you capture all the light part of his, of the the lights of the flesh and then you go in with the shadows. And hopefully you do this while it's wet because if you do it while it's wet, then it looks more realistic and you get a nice, nice soft edges on it. You know, you get soft edges and, and see how much darker this is compared to this already. Right there, you can see already it's getting a little bit darker here. And you can use those dark, um, brighter colors, but I just want to make sure I get a, a little bit more, a little bit darker this time. I want to capture that light. And um, again, I can use any color I want in here. The colors are, it's more important to get the right values than, than colors. And the really dark darks will be the eyes, nose, and mouth. So nice thing is, is I can go back in later. And when I do the eyes, nose, and mouth, it just makes everything look great. It just all comes together with that. And I'm going to go over this eye with a darker color. And then what happens is later on, I make it even darker. 
So I'm again capturing just the main parts, the lights, the darks, and the lights. And I'm just gonna, and since it's um, wet in the wet, I'm getting soft edges, but you can help it along by just tapping and making it look like um, fur. Like you're getting a little fur. I'm just kind of going like this, and you also get the edge of the fur. And now that what's happening is it's going in and making these little hair hair brushes, like um, it brushes like hair, because it's like that's what this is. It's a little hair brush, and so if you push it sideways like this, you kind of pick up those hairs. And then of course you know me, I always put other colors in there. I don't have to just stick with the one color. I can put even yellow in there. I can put all these colors in there. I can put some blue in there even. Now in dark purple, maybe some pinks and such. I can put them all in there. And now this value, if I stick with this value for my background, then no matter what I do, it's going to look like the brightness of, this, of, the sun, of the sun going on in the lion. It doesn't have to be that dark. You just have to make sure that all the darks are related to even. And that's called um, high contrast, where you use, use the... Um, what am I thinking about here? It's... I, um, high key. High key is what I'm thinking about. Because high key is when you only go to a number like five for your darkness. So, um, when, oh, of the big parts. But the small parts can still have like a number nine and ten. Like in your center of interest, like the eyes and nose and mouth could still have that. And it'll still give that look of high key. Meaning high key, really bright. A really bright painting with not too many really dark darks. If I go with really dark darks, that's okay, but I gotta go through all of them just like you see on that value study. And the value study is not a value study, of course, it's a, a picture rendered from the photograph with um, Photoshop. So it's basically not a, it's not a value study like you do with pencil and pen, which, you know, would be kind of cool to do. But um, I found when I had people do that in my classes, they would spend the whole class doing a value study and so I ask them now just to take it and make it black and white of it and see how the, how the values go. Again, could you spend the whole class just doing a value study? Um, that's what they were doing. And that's actually I did what I started doing in, when I was in school. Um, but you still had to do it. <laughs> Shapiro did not let me off the hook. You know, you had to do those value studies. But I just find that if you're working the whole time in, the, in my classroom and all you're doing is doing the value study, then you're never painting and you're not learning how to paint. So that's a um, it is important to do the value studies, but you can also do them as like a as a black and white print of the picture. It kind of shows you what the what the values are. And so here I'm going now with my pretty dark darks. I'm trying to get them all in there, and to mix my browns, I don't have browns on my palette except for the midazolone brown, this one right here. But um, I mix them with my orange and violets, orange or yellow and violets, and they make kind of a nice brown. Here I'm putting in his ears right away, using these negative painting. Any questions here yet? No, no questions. All right, you can, you can, don't be shy. You can ask questions. For anybody who's new, uh, you know, these other guys, they know what they're doing. Damn, um, boy, but you guys have been doing some really nice stuff, I must say. Uh, I've been looking at um, what you guys have been doing and posting it on my Facebook group. And if you want to get that Facebook group, just go to my my website that's on there. You can join there through there. Go to Facebook and find it through my other site. And um, it's, it's um, artists helping artists. It's kind of nice seeing what you guys are doing and helping each other out. And you're doing some great stuff for when you're doing these Thursday night um, paint alongs. They're pretty neat. Really enjoying that you're putting them up there and really doing some really great stuff. All right, so here we're putting a little bit of red into this, a little warmth. And I'm going to go in here now. It's still a little wet. I'm going to spray it a little bit again. It's starting to get a little dry. And this is going to make a little bit of dots on there, but that's okay. It's going to run together a little bit, and so it'll be good. I just I'm working too slow here. I've got to get a little bit faster. and Or just spray it like that. Just spray a little bit. When you're in your own studio and you're not talking to somebody, then you know um, it'll be easier for you to do a little bit faster. Being here and talking and painting and you know, doing, trying to figure out thing like three, four things at a time, it gets a little tough sometimes to kind of figure out and go fast, fast. And let's see, we're gonna go in here a little bit. 
this is kind of light, but I'm going to, I'm going to put it like in my other thing here. I'm going to make it a little bit darker right in this section, even though it's kind of light. You notice how I'm using a lot of different, I'm using my yellow, my oranges, and I'm not, I didn't pick any red up yet. Mostly my purples. I didn't pick any blue up either yet, which I probably should do a little bit. A little bit of blue in there, why not? It'll make it green, because then you can have a little green in there. No, I'm not using red or green, so forget about that, what I just said. Because <laughs> then I'm going to have to start adding those colors in there too. So I'm just going to put this down here. And he's actually sitting on some log type of things. He's round... Um, round log type of things that he's sitting on and um is it important that you show that not really people are not going to know what these things are even if you do it like a round thing it's just make it he's sitting on either a ground or something and it has these little round things in there so you don't have to be so particular with what he's sitting on or what that is down there and even his leg back here like i said before you don't have to be so make it so complicated that you have to make it look exactly like the photo just make this bottom part a little bit darker and it's rounded a little bit rounded like this so just um think of it like that and it'll be fine and here i'm gonna put a little bit darker so i get the main negative pink the main a little bit and if i wanted the soft edge i can just rub it out a little bit and do it soft edge too and then up here we get a little bit darker again and you can also put this darker all this can be darker yet um, you don't have to be stuck with it just one wash. You can do two washes, um, but if you can get in the first wash, that's always the best. The best is one wash. And two washes is probably the most you want to do. Three washes, you're starting to get a little bit more complicated, and it's getting a little bit worked at, and so you're not going to get as nice a look and not as fresh a look. And so, and for all you newcomers, I use a towel across my um, board so that I can put my brush anywhere, and then I just bleach them during the week and then I use them again and again and again and so now over here I'm getting the shadow part of his hand over here which is also pretty dark and so just pick up the same kind of darks you have everywhere else and then just go in here and make that happen and as you notice on the bottom of his paws and it's really kind of neat because if you're a cat owner um, even I don't care how big these lions are they have that look of like a little cat like our you know domestic cat in the house they have these little paws that they're just a lot bigger <laughs> very much bigger um, but you can put a little you know this is kind of cute how they have their little paws there and so and it is big but still you know you, you even make the, the um, lion's paws cute putting a little lavender in there to shadow it off a little bit it's kind of like yellowish and lavender it's his compliment so i'm using that for his compliment this I want to make a little bit more soft edge, so I wet it while it's while it's um, drying here. I'm just wetting it a little bit. And now we're going to go right into the background, because that's all my middle tones and my darks on him. And then what I'll do is later on let this dry, and then I'll go and get my details. That's simple. Now, so this other one here, I got it a little bit too dark back here to in, in relationship to the face. So I'm going to keep this one. I will probably go cool with it. This is warm. I'll probably go cool. This time, that one I didn't do. I did kind of both the same type of thing. So I'll go a little bit cooler with this one. And so I'll add my purple and maybe a little bit of blue on this one. And um, and I'm kind of trying to stick with the values that are already there. So I don't have that much more difference in the background to the, to the lion. Because if you do, then what happens is it just takes on and makes that lighter. But if I, again, like I said, if I make it the same value as this, my darks, then it will work it will work as the as it being all dark and that's not cool let's see cool is this color blue is kind of cool but then it goes green if i go with that so let's see let's go more of a purplish purplish cool and so in the picture this is in this back of his head is kind of lit up like rim lighting so let's put some rim, rim lighting there i can even dull it down i don't have to put really bright colors there even though i did want to kind of put bright colors in here but i'm also going to use some of these colors that i used back there in, in the lion too just so that it reflects into the background but mostly it will be a lot of the same values that i or i mean colors that i used and values that i used in here some more purple i can make these look like leaves here and there like I said, it's a little bit lighter this time, a little bit lighter, not quite as dark. 
and it'll still give me that look because the white of the paper will be the lightest light. And so, oh boy, look at that. I've got a reflection. I moved my lighting around a little bit today to see if I can make it better. But it looks like that's not happening. I shouldn't have done that. So I have to look online to see how to do the perfect lighting for for these videos. I, I'm so, so far, they've been pretty decent. But you never know. You know, maybe you make it better. So nice little rim lighting around this, you see, and um, so I'm going to do that. Get a little bit more purple in here, which makes it kind of brown. You know how I like floating pigment. You guys are floating some great pigment. I know Everett and La, he had one of a painting yesterday. Um, Pamela asks, how much water is on my brush? It doesn't appear to be much. It's um, not as much as I normally did because I had it wet it first. But as I'm, as I'm wetting as I go along, then I put a little bit more water in there. Because you can see I'm going slow. I don't wet the whole thing first. I call this wetting as I go along. And now I see how I put a lot of water there. And then I'll place pigment into that water. Because I, I can't wet this because I want this to be negative painted. And I get those little, um, the, the hairs to negative paint the hairs in there. So I can't wet that. I could, I mean, you could do it soft edge too. But I decided to make it hard edged hard edged and um and see how this kind of just bleeds into the background how cool that looks and it's still giving you the brightness so this one is um it's kind of neat when you do two because you can always you know this one's not bad but it's just it's funny how when you do two paintings you can just kind of do things differently and you think about it what you did in the first one and then you can switch switch gears a little bit here and there to try to figure out how to make it even better and i think by making it more high key and making it not so dark the background, but keeping these shadows on the same um, system, then it's great. Then it actually works out pretty good. So here's gonna be some leaves. Picking up grays here. And see, those are just negative painted leaves. Not very good <laughs> painted leaves, but they're okay. They're, they'll be fine. I'm gonna go in here later and get a little bit more um, detailed leaves. <laughs> if you wanna draw them out a little bit better, you can do that too. Draw them out a little bit nicer and then you get a little bit. Now over here, this is a big area. And so with this brush, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch brushes because that's a big area to cover with that little brush. So I'm gonna wet it first with this, with this brush. And then I can um, maybe go back to the other brush or just keep it up with this brush. Now that's nice, evenly wet. Make sure it's even. The wash, let's see. Any, um, is your brush rather dry when you are doing the edges of the hair? Um, the edges of the hair, yeah. Like I said, it is dry here. And so I don't wet it all beforehand. And I don't want the soft edge. If I wanted it to be a soft edge, I would wet it farther and let the paint go on its own and make it soft edge. You know how I am with the soft edging when you do it on its own. Paint does it on its own. You just have to wet it and put it in there and thick. Anybody ask the other questions here? Um, nope. So that's it for the edges. So um, thanks. Thanks for the questions. I always love questions. So just get them out there. So now over here, I'm going to put a little bit of warmth, but I actually still need some more cool, right? And there, I'm going to put some leaves in here too that are going to be dark later. A little bit darker. Not super dark. Like I said, I'm not making this super dark like I did the last one again because of the shadows not being really super dark in here. Another, um, I got a suggestion from somebody in one of you artists out there uh, that watches all the time. I forgot who it was, but had asked if they could do, um, if I could do vignetting, vignetta painting. And definitely that, that's going to be, I think maybe that'll be next week. We'll do a vignette. And vignettes are where you don't do all the way to the edge and you just kind of put it into the middle of the painting. And so that's kind of a fun thing to do and doing a little vignette of the painting in your painting, making your painting more vignette. And so here again, not super dark. If I want to get some dark leaves in here, I can do that while it's still damp. I'm going to take my, not this big brush. I'm going to take the smaller brush and go in there with some of these darker colors that are like this color. What was that? That was like purple, a little bit of yellow, kind of makes it brown. And so I'm going to go in here and just take some and make some darker leaves. Now these are going to be soft edge because it's dry and because it's wet. And so I'm just going to take a look at that. I accidentally today put sepia in my black. So that's what's down there. For some reason I put sepia in there. I thought it was black. And as I put it in there, I say, but this is kind of brown. And so I do have some sepia in here. It's not on my list. So just letting you know. 
So I'm not cheating. It's just it's a different color. I just made a mistake. And so down here, I want to put a few um, leaves in here too. Maybe over here a little bit. I get to paint around this leaf here. Darks. I really was missing spattering today too. I may spatter because you know, it's always fun to spatter. I love spattering. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I like to get texture, but I don't know. Maybe this is a little bit too too nice to spatter on. We'll see. <laughs> so next we're going to go down this way. That's so how much time we have. Okay, we still have half an hour. We have plenty of time. So we're going to come down this way now and come around here, get some of the leaves that are falling there, then darken up this corner. I'm going to use a little bit of blue with my red and make it purple, gray. It comes around and I'm negative painting the, the hand or the paw a little bit here. And then this is the side of the logs that he's laying on. And so it goes back up again over here. Again, negative paint his little paw here. Or I should say his huge paw. <laughs> And then, why not put these in right away? I'm going to put little lines in there. What the heck? I have it on my brush, so put little lines in there right away. And you notice they do have these little, where, where their um, claws are. There's a little bit of black there on the picture. You see there's a little bit of dark right there, so I might as well put that in since I have it on, also on my brush. Make this a little bit darker. Have it come back here. I know there's some leaves or something laying there. I'm not going to be that particular about what that is down there. It's such a small area. I don't want to start getting crazy with what's over here. And you put some of the yellows that I have in the leaves over here. Like there's a leaf laying there or something, but that's about it. And what's important will be his features. That's what's going to be important. And actually, that's what's up next. And so I will get rid of these two brushes because those are way too big to do these features. And so I'm going to show you how to do an eye. Um, I do this kind of eye for any kind of thing that I do for when I'm doing people or animals or whatever. And I'm just getting a sheet of paper here. And I just want to show you when you're doing an eye, a little, little side thing here, is that on this animal, on the lion, he has, it's almost outlined in black. And so that's like on a woman who has mascara on, the eyelashes. And then on him, he's going to have this going around. And then the tear duct is right there. And then you got to think, here is where the eye is going to be. So then I color the eye. I will do this on him too. I see his eye is already colored with the yellow that I put down. So you're going to have to put the yellow right here. Then I put it, and actually on a lion, there's probably no whites of the eye. So I'm just going to darken that. And then I will later on leave or put white right here. I can do that, leave it right there where the highlight's going to be. That's where the highlight's going to be. On this, I'm just going to leave it there um, because I can. And this is kind of a little small. I'm just going to use white paint. And then I take solid black for the pupil and I just put that right in the middle, the pupil. And what I have to do is that when we do this, look a little bit closer, is that this color right here, the light part of the eye, that's the light part and the, and the, and the um, highlight is always across from that. So let's see how it's across. It's, there's the light part of the eye, the color of the eye, and then that's going to be the light part. Now, it may not be exactly like that on a lion, and, um, but if you do it, it'll look good. <laughs> it, will just, it will look good if you just keep the, that part. It'll look very wet. If you keep the highlight on that side and leave this part of the eye where the color is, not the pupil. The pupil is just black. And then, um, like I said, I don't think they have whites of the eye, so you just color that in. And I do that with all eyes. And if it's a human eye, then I just leave the white on the side there, which is usually not white. It's just a little bit of, um, I'll put this underneath here so you can still see the eye. <laughs> and um, so now let's go in here and do the same thing for the lion. So I'll go right in and I'm going to take eyeliner and go around his eye. And um, there's where the tear duct is a little bit right here. There's a tear duct kind of thing. And then it goes around this way. And now the color is already there for his eye because I went right over it. I didn't leave I didn't leave white of the paper, which I know a lot of people do, and they leave white of the paper. But on a lion, there's, and even if you're doing a white on for the eyes, whites of the eyes are not really white. They're not as white as you think. Um, so I always put a little beige or gray over them so that they don't stand out so much. So now I'm not going to leave the highlight. I'm just going to put paint in there. 
and I will put in the dark um, pupil, leaving the opposite side of the of the light. That's going to be where the the highlight's going to be on the opposite side. So in this one, on the left eye, and they and they both go the same on both eyes. Like if you're going to put the pupil uh, or the highlight on one side, it's got to go on the same on the other side. Otherwise, it starts looking cross-eyed if you <laughs> if you put the white in different spots. And so again, across here, then I make this part a little bit darker, this part a little darker. And then I'm going to take pure white paint and I'm just going to put a dot right there and right there. And so that'll be his eyes. And now um, you got the champagne glass for the nose and the, and the nose has a little bit of warmth in it. So when I say warmth, it can either put red, orange or anything warm in there. And of course, um, you also want to use black because there is parts in it that like if there's a hole, you can put the solid black. And so I'm just going to put that where the nostrils are a little bit and come down here and it comes down. And so that's like a champagne glass, right? And then the mouth. And then here's the, here's the part of, of the champagne glass on the bottom here, which is his mouth. And see, I'm going with a pretty dark, dark, because I can always put water on a spot and make it, and make it soft edged and a little bit lighter. But so you first want to go with the dark, dark, darks, you know, and then, and then you can put a little water in there and soften things. But those three things right there, the eyes, nose, and mouth, are very important to get right. And now I can go in and I can manipulate from that point on. I can go in here, make this a little bit darker underneath here on spots, and go more with like a middle tone. And my darks that are, because that first one was my lights, right? And some of my shadowing, but now I can go even darker on some spots. And I can just meld it in. If I want it to be soft edge underneath here, I just put water. I take water, a damp brush, and I can just pull that down a little bit. On the top of that too, I'll just take a brush with water and I'll just let it bleed up a little bit. Give it a little bit of water on top. And I'll just automatically bleed into that area that you got wet. Now, if you want it to not mean like a hard edge of there, then just wisp it like this. I'm wisping it. Or take a little bit darker color. I'll take a little bit of purple, maybe a little bit of lavender. I'll come down here. I'll make it a little bit thicker because now it's wet and now I can make the soft fur all by itself because it's going to come all by itself because I wet that area. And now I'm doing a little shadowing right here. And again, do I want it to be a hard edge or soft edge? If I want a hard edge, I make sure that I keep it dry. I make it nice and dark right here. Really, really dark now. Now, one thing though, if I make this really dark, dark, these big shadows dark, then again, this will not be dark enough either. So watch how you do your um, darks because I'm not going to do it as dark as the photograph. Like I said, I'm going to make it this way. So that's almost too dark right down there already. So I'm going to lighten that up a little bit because I almost forgot that I'm going more for a lighter dark. And that way I can make it look like shiny because if I start making a really dark, dark down here, that means this will have to be even darker because the background is slightly darker. But you can do parts and pieces too. You don't have to make everything um, like the photograph and make it all dark, dark. And you can just um, go by the the amount of light that's in the dark area. Any questions? Let me see. Um, all right. Okay. You like the eyes. All right. All right. <laughs> He's coming alive. He's coming alive. And see, if I want a soft edge, I just put water down. I first get the hard edge. And I don't have to make it really dark to get a... If you use a hard edge, it makes it look um, a little bit darker. I'm taking my finger and just kind of going in here and getting some of the edges now and making it just really light. I don't need to go really dark to create the shapes and stuff. I can go just lightly and it'll, it'll change shapes and um, areas. Here, I can negative paint around this part. See, just a little bit here and there. Just a little bit darker can show a shadow and also give you details, markings on the actual lion. And then he's got his, this part of his mouth is a little bit darker too. His little shadow goes right into his whiskers. The shadow goes right into his whiskers. And then this side is um, definitely a little bit darker too. Even this side a little bit. And then also right whiskers, little dots here and there. Right, and little by little he's coming alive and usually their nose is really marked up with the scratches and scars and stuff and 
you can put that in there or if you want your lion to be a nice zoo lion that hasn't been scratched up <laughs> you can do that too you do what you want make the lion your own lion and so over here we're going to do a little bit of the the mane the fur and just kind of come up here little dots here and there here negative paint around there's some of this hair going up into into the dark area darker area Again, I'm not going really dark like the photograph this time that I did already. And so I, I want to try to do the higher key painting where I don't make everything so dark. But then, like I said, you have to do the whole thing for the background. You have to make the same kind of values. So I guess today the big lesson is that if you're going to go this light with your darks, then make sure that your background darks are the same. Because that's your, your dark pattern and your light pattern have to be this kind of the same. I'm just going to make that a little bit darker over here on the bottom. How much time do I have left here? Oh, we still got time. Yes, we some more questions. I, um, I just want to let you know that I am going to be teaching um, live classes coming up in, in June, July, I think in August. I don't think I have anything. Except, oh, and then I've got September, October. There's, it's going to be, I'm going to be at um, Duluth Art Institute in July and in August. Just a two-day workshop and I'm, and and those workshops up in Duluth they're only two days but you don't have to bring anything none of the supplies all the supplies will be supplied by me and by Legion and Holbein um, I'm gonna get the supplies from them and um, you can just bring yourself though it's if you want to bring your things and one of them is a two-day acrylic class and one of them is a, a two-day uh, watercolor class and we work on different medium um, surfaces we work on yupo we work on stonehenge we work on and the acrylic class we also work on canvas one time we work on black um black watercolor paper and so it's it's a really a lot of fun if you really want to take a live class and you know hopefully you've got your vaccine and um it'd be no problem we're not gonna be probably wearing masks and i don't wear the mask in my classes now here because everybody's vaccinated and so uh, those are the, the people that aren't they get they, they probably want to wear the mask but we don't wear the mask because we were vaccinated and so it's it's not bad at all and so here we go down here and see the whites in there look at those whites the whites really help out a lot i wish i would have had a little bit more white on this hand but oh well and you can't really use white to make that because white is never going to be as light as the paper it's just unless you make it really thick with acrylics then it's then it will because you're using it thick other than that though you cannot really get it really really um white white it's just because it's just as a different surface to it and then i guess if you um, take it right out of the tube maybe get it a little bit closer but um i try to keep the white of the paper that's always the brightest white Let's get a little bit of dark inside the ear and then we're going to go right to the inside here a little bit. We're going to get a little bit nice in there. You get to paint that a little bit on the inner like it's going into there. Let's see what else right here. It feels like it should be really dark right here like it's going back in there. So a little bit right there nice and dark. And so I just take my dark dark purple. And I mean, even in high key paintings, in the parts that are important, like the center of interest, it's okay to go in and get a nice dark dark because you want your eye to focus in on that spot because that's important. And the paw will come forward, that'll go back. I will erase this line. I got my needle rubber eraser underneath here. And I'll show you, you can just um, you can erase these things right on, right through the, there, see all the lines are gone now. And so that'll give it a little bit more cleanliness there. So that uh, I, 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 you can get the paper or the pencil lines away from there, just here and there, because you know you want the paw to really stand out, and I don't want it to be as messy. Now I'm not sure if I like the little hole in his head, but <laughs> there is um, that in the photograph. But I'm, I'm going to tone this down a little bit. He doesn't need a hole in his head. See, so there you go, gone. <laughs> you don't have to put what's in the painting. You can always do a little bit different. Now let's do the background a little bit, and then we're done. We're going to do a little. Take a little bit of this dark um, leaves from the background, give it another dimension. And so I'll go in here. Oops, move my whole table here. So let me give you the eye there. Okay, so we're gonna take this dark purple and a little bit of brown. We're just gonna put some leaves in here. 
in the background. I kind of draw them first and I fill them in. They're not quite wet, they're not too wet, but you can always, if you wet them, then you can throw some other colors in there to let them float, right? We love doing that. You know, we love doing that. So I just float a little color in there. And these are just the little leaves to show another dimension. You can have a little line coming through here. You can put it here and there. And that little water spot I dropped here. So we can fix that up by little darks. A little line work going through here. And we can do the same thing down here a little bit. In the background, I did a few, do a couple of leaves here. And nice thing is they don't have to be perfect. You don't have to make a perfect leaf, right? Because no leaf really out there is perfect. You just, it's, you know, it's cut up a little bit. It's been trampled on. Now that's wet, I want to put a little bit of color in there. A little orange in there. Any questions? Let me see. Uh, nope, no questions. Come on, guys. Give me some questions. I love questions. And thanks for those people that have um, at, um, given some suggestions on what to paint next. I'm always lo looking for what you guys want to paint and what you guys want to learn also. What you want to... When you want to learn something, let me know. Um, I've been doing a lot of these almost for the whole year now, or, the, or last year with the pandemic, and now we're going on year two here, doing these live videos, and um, I'm running out of ideas. So, of what you want to know, and actually, now that's terrible. Look at that. So, let me show you how to get rid of something. So, I'm just going to wet this area and pull that away. There we go. That was a little bit too much there. So, I'm just going to kind of let that bleed in. Anytime you don't like something, just let it bleed into the background. There we go. Put a little color in there, let it float. You'll never know that it was there. <laughs> I just wanted to be, I put too much attention to that. And so we don't want to do that. We just want to go in there and give it a little texture. Like there's something happening over here, here and there. Let's do it over here. And now we're pretty much done. Another, another Thursday guys. This has been fun. I really enjoy these a lot. And, and again, thank you so much for, I'm doing these and and painting away and, and showing I mean you guys are money you are um, been doing it the whole time I've been doing these and some, some of you have gotten really really pretty amazed I'm pretty amazed how well you guys are doing we should take some of the old little paintings that you had done and see and kind of compare what you started with and, and I'm really enjoying that you guys are learning so awesome that's what I guess I, why I teach I want people to Learn how to do stuff and you're doing great. A little bit darker right here. All right, I did say I was gonna do a still life and somebody gave me an idea of like, they could be very meaningful. They can be very meaningful to still life. So um, the problem is, is that the meaning of my still life may be way different from the meaning of what the products that you use or the things that you use. But yeah, we, can, we definitely can do a still life. I would love to do a still life. And maybe I was thinking, I was trying to think if I, I should have you set up your own still lives with your own products to, or things that you wanted to, you know, try to paint, you know, because everybody's got their own little things that they put in still lives. And so I was thinking about that a little bit. And before I do a still life, we're just going to figure that out, see if I can't figure out something. All right. So I think I've dab dabbled around enough here now. Let's see. I think I've got the nice... I try to even it out too. Like if I see a little bit of orange here, I kind of put it over here just, just to give it that nice look of um, consistency. This should be a little bit darker here too. I don't think I missed anything, right, Tina? Did I say anything I was going to show? But <laughs> I don't think I did tonight. So I don't think I missed anything tonight. If I did, Tina will definitely tell me. So, very good. All right, so we did the eye. I didn't have to use the airbrush. This, oh, I want to show you. We, we've got the whiskers. Hey, <laughs> let me show you. That's what I have this thing here for. So this is called a liner. Uh, a liner. And it's a little dirty in there. But it's these two little things that come together. Can you see this? See how it comes together? A little dirty in there. Okay, it's not even focusing on it. But it's this thing with this little thing. What you want to do is you want to make the edging not too wide open. And then what I'm going to do is take white and I'm going to make my whiskers with, with this thing so I don't have to use my paintbrush. If you are real good with the paintbrush and you want to make it, you know, um, you can do that. But I, what I'm doing is I, I put it like this. I put the paint inside here. A liner. What do they call this? Um, rule it. No. Um, 
liner. I think it's called a liner. <laughs> uh, I'm going to put a, um, a link into the YouTube section. You can see what it is on Amazon. I think they're like seven bucks on Amazon. But um, they're great for, you know, putting in lines. You can even use a ruler. So, I'm, again, I'm just putting in a little bit of water and white. And I'm going to test it out on something else first. Let's see if I can... I'm going to take it and... Here we go, see? Closer up. You just, it's filled up and you just... Whoopsie. Not filled up enough. Okay, hold on. It's a little bit too thick too and it's a little bit too wide open. Let's see, again, take white and water. Yeah, you have to make it like a certain consistency. Gotta practice with it a little bit and I better dull this down here because right now it doesn't look so good. <laughs> here, here we go. Whoa, I'm dripping all over now. <laughs> Comedy act here. All right, so hold on. I'm going to set up my whole camera setup here. <laughs> all right, boats. We can paint some boats. Definitely can paint some boats again. Uh, Mill says we have to get the drawing right. Yes always that's not that's a given you always have to get the drawing right and even more on a on a person and an animal because it's not like a tree where you can mess up a little bit here and there um if you make the eyes look kind of weird um, they're gonna look weird <laughs> and so you gotta you gotta have some really good drawing going on when it comes to animals um, people's faces portraits you know i mean it, drawing is always important no matter what it's just one of those things okay let's see here we go again A little too wide open. Okay, I'm gonna use my brush. <laughs> I had to practice with it a little bit, <laughs> but they do work really well if you practice with them a little bit. And this, I uh, got it too wide open, and let me just take that off of there again and do it again with a small. Or you can just use your your liner brush and do a nice fast thing for the whiskers, and also for their hairs on the on the animal too. You can do that too. Yes, I am using titanium white. Um, I don't use Chinese white because Chinese white is transparent. And so I even put little, little, little lines down here. And I mean, you could put masking fluid down for this, but then it gets, um, I mean, it gets really, to take it off and stuff. And it all depends on what you like best and what you work best with. I usually like working with this brush best because you can just a real light, real thin line. The liner brush is not a little bit thicker. So I, I would say... Try to use the liner brush instead of the the um, ruler. What's this called? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> I'll think of it. I'll put it, like I said, I'll put it into the um, comments section of the video. And I think that's pretty much it. Let's go put a little highlight on the on the claws here. You got his eyes. We've got a, little, a couple little hairs going in the ears. Let me do a little of that. Maybe a little bit down here, a little light coming around the edge. So don't be scared of using white, it's okay. Nobody's gonna um, arrest you or anything. It's fine to use white. Just don't enter this into a show that doesn't allow white in the, to the painting. But here we go. Again, you could do that with the um, with masking fluid beforehand or paint around it, but I just use white and put a little, make his nose a little white, put a little, little highlights on his nose. Okay, so. There we have it. A little bit, um, I think he's looking pretty okay. Now, his, um, I didn't do this as thin. Like, I didn't make it as dark right here. So, it does. he doesn't look as thin. I left it a little bit wider, everything. And this is not quite as dark as the photo. So it's just a little puffier. So, he had a good meal. <laughs> he had a good meal. And um, I could have made this a little bit. And again, a lot of the drawing has to do with how things turn out and such. So, um, and how dark I got with certain things. And all good. And one more thing, just I just think this is a little bit wide, and so I'm just going to make it a little bit thinner right here. I'm just going to kind of go in here a little bit thinner, make that a little bit darker. There we go. See, that's nicer. Maybe a little bit darker right here, and we're good. All right, so let's take the tape off, and we'll set it up. And cheers for the third time. <laughs> cheers for the third time. Let's see what it is. Okay, there we go. That's not bad. That's all I'd like a number nine. All right, so I'll pull this off away. I'm not going to rip it this time like I ripped my last one. I'm going to rip away from the picture. 
rip away. Take the tape and rip away. This is the Holbein um, soft tape, which usually doesn't rip, but anything will rip if you go into the paper. So always away like this. All right, and so there's the eye. I want to show you the eye one more time, really close up. So you can see that when you want to come back to the video and paint that. Ruling pen, yes, thank you, thank you, Lynn. Ruling pen, that's what it's called. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I totally, I always mess up on that. I don't know why, I can't remember. It's called a ruling pen. So use a ruling pen, you can use that. I um, didn't use a ruling pen on this one either, but here's the two different ones, a little bit different um, values, but all working out, all pretty decent. And next week, we're possibly gonna do a vignette and maybe a high contrast or high, high key painting so that may be next week and um so let's see uh, any other questions before we get going here so you got a titanium white i don't think so so again thanks guys and get your drawing on there please get your drawing good like look at those eyes are i drew these a little bit wider apart these are a little bit closer it's funny how that different drawings make it look different you know it's just it's very important so yes mill it's very it's important to get the drawing right all right, so let me just switch um, gears here and go to my ending frame. And so guys, thanks again. Thanks for um, coming out and painting with me. And I will see you next Thursday. And again, we're gonna be doing um, some, some video. Oh, look at this, it's all screwed up here. <laughs> so, so anyways, thanks for this until next week. And please show me your paintings. Let's see what you do. And do some fun lions. All right, they have a roaring good time, right? <laughs> All right, goodbye. <laughs>